My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. The current prelate of Opus Dei, Don Fernando Ocaris, was elected in January of 2017. I remember because I was there in Rome at the time. And one of the, you know, the prelate's first long trips after his election was to go to Brazil. And when he got there uh, to visit the people of Opus Dei and others uh, in that country, he explained uh, the reason for his trip. You know, he said that a year and a half previous, he had been invited by the bishops of Brazil, the Episcopal Conference, to give them a, a series of classes. And although he thought you know, that his abundant work in Rome would make that trip inadvisable, the then prelate of Opus Dei at the time, Bishop Javier Echeverria, his predecessor, encouraged him to accept the invitation and to go and, and, and teach those classes. And so uh, Don Fernando kind of joked, so you owe my visit here to Don Javier. And there in that first long visit uh, as the prelate to, to Brazil, uh, he had lots of wonderful get-togethers with all sorts of people. And uh, in one of those get-togethers, they sang him a song. They had like a little show. And he was very moved by the lyrics of the song. And my Portuguese is terrible, so I'm not even going to try to pronounce what they sang. But the translation of the refrain was, the time for loving is brief. And so he, he remarked on that, you know, at the end of the get-together. He said, the time for loving is brief. We need to take advantage of time. And taking advantage of time means filling it with love for God and as a result, service to others. And Jesus, we want to begin this time of prayer by remembering that fact, that the time for loving is brief, and we don't know how much time we have. And in a, in a sense, Lent can be understood with this conviction of urgency. You know, St. Paul wrote, see now is the acceptable time. See now is the day of salvation. Are we convinced of this, of the preciousness of time, which slips through our fingers like water? Are we convinced of the urgency of this period of Lent, which is really quite short, it's only 40 days, to bring about this conversion that Jesus longs for in each one of us? St. Josemaria has a wonderful point in the way, where he says, conduct yourself well now, without looking back on yesterday, which is really gone, and without worrying about tomorrow, which for you may never come. With all of this in mind, this preciousness of time, the importance of the here and now, we look at the readings for today in this first week of Lent. And they center on the story of Jonah and the city of Nineveh, all of which is imbued with this sense of urgency and also perhaps a little bit of humor. You know, Jonah is one of these striking figures. He's one of the minor prophets from the northern kingdom of Israel. And he has always captured the imagination of people up and down the ages. Maybe especially for that story of him with the whale, right? How he is swallowed up by the whale. And we know that he is tasked by God to uh, go to the city of Nineveh and convert them. And Nineveh was the enemy city of Israel. They were the enemies. And so Jonah is obviously opposed to going there, and he runs in the other direction. But eventually he, 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 he turns around and he faces his mission. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, set out for the great city of Nineveh, and announced to it the message that I will tell you. 
So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh, according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk, announcing, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. It's interesting how it says that it took him three days to walk through the city of Nineveh. You know, I live in a very big city, one of the biggest cities in the world, uh, New York. And the island of Manhattan, you know, you can walk around the whole island and most of the boroughs, or all the boroughs, in, in less time. You can walk around the island of Manhattan in, within, within one day. And certainly the whole, the whole city in, in less than three days. And so what is this about Nineveh being so big? Um, you know, biblical historians have, have said that, you know, it may have been not so much that Jonah walked around the city and it took him three days to do so, but rather that he had to go through the city with this message and he had to bring that message to so many people you know, traveling through all of the neighborhoods of the city, all of the houses of each neighborhood, well, that would have taken a long time, at least three days. And announcing this mysterious message, 40 days more and Nineveh shall be destroyed. Here we hear those, that song, that Brazilian song, the time for loving is brief. 40 days of conversion before it's too late. It's good that in our times of prayer with you, Jesus, we often ask you to give us the space for true repentance, the space for conversion. Jesus, give me enough time to be able to purify my heart and help me to truly make the most of the time that you give me because I never know when my life will end. I never know how much time uh, I will be allowed. And we need to repent. Jesus, we want to fall more in love with you. We see those areas where we still need to grow. We need to repent and encourage other people to repent because the human heart can become so callous, even in the face of a great good. And Jesus, this is what you lament uh, in the gospel. The fact that those who lived with you did not repent before your preaching and your presence. They were obstinate. They don't trust you, and they're not open to your words. They seek a sign. They want you to prove your power to them. And even then, it's not enough. We read, this generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn it, because at the preaching of Jonah, they repented. And there is something greater than Jonah here. We sense the urgency in your words, Jesus. You have come that all men and women might be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And so we hear in your voice when you complain of this faithless generation. It's like you're saying, we're losing time here. Come on. In this Lent, let us each look at our situation seriously and with a sense of urgency. Jesus, I don't want you to become impatient with me. I don't want you to view me as you viewed those who heard you during your earthly life. I don't want to react with that callous heart. Help me to react strongly and immediately to your word, just as the Ninevites reacted to the words of Jonah right away. They came out of their houses when they heard him preaching, and immediately they repented with sackcloth and ashes. We can ask Our Lady that she might instill in us this urgency. She who loved the will of God and reacted immediately to it, she is the one that urges us on, because the time for loving is brief. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation, I ask your help in putting them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, 
my guardian angel, intercede for me. <laughs>